Hello everybody, it's that college football guy here another video. Well, final of the scheduled prediction videos. Final one, the SEC, my conference. Um, we do have a few subscriber schools in there besides I'm the only Vol fan that I know of who's in there. Um, but we're going to go through on this one. As I said, for the, Vol for the schools that have subscribers, we're going to make some notations about that. Let me save this one for last, which is the actual rankings at the end of this. So, SEC still has divisions for this year. When Oklahoma and Texas come in next year, they're going to uh, do away with divisions. And those of you wondering where I'm at real quick, I'm in um, just east of, I'm in Manchester, Tennessee. I was trying to get back to Lebanon or not to near Nashville, but unfortunately it ran out of hours, so I had to park here. Going to go there in the morning about 5 a.m., drop a trailer off and find out what the heck happens from there. But anyway... Shall we get into this? So we have alphabetical order by divisions like we've been doing. First up, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Had a good season last year, but this is going to be a change. Um, this Alabama team is not going to be a Bryce Young type offense. This is this is not your anybody who's facing Alabama this year isn't facing the 2022 Alabama Crimson Tide. They're be facing the 2015 Alabama Crimson Tide. That's when Blake Sims was the quarterback. When it was ground and pound and shove it down your throat and beat you up on both sides of the ball. That's how they're going to play this year. And basically, they're going to have game managers as quarterbacks. So how they do with their schedule this year? First off, game one, home against Middle Tennessee State. Love MTSU, but you guys are getting absolutely annihilated. Home against Texas. A lot of Texas fans saying, we're going to, going to beat them. What are your weaknesses last year? You couldn't stop the run. They're going to shove the ball down your throat. And as a Tennessee fan who has gone through it, I can tell you this. They don't get home, they don't get calls going against them in Tuscaloosa, which is where you're playing. You think the officials are going to give any breaks to you? You're going to have to beat them by 14. And since your defense plays right into their offense, that's why I gave the victory to Alabama over you. Alabama gets to win. At USF, that's a win. Home against Ole Miss, that's a win. At Mississippi State, that's a win. Here comes the first hiccup. What has been Alabama's problem? Road games. First true test on the road, ironically, is back against Texas A&M and Jimbo Fisher. And I'm going out on a limb on this one. But I think Jimbo pulls it off and beats them again. First assistant of Nick Saban to beat him twice. Um... So, they're going to lose at A&M. Home against Arkansas, they win. Home against Tennessee, I hate it, but they're going to beat Tennessee. Then they go into the bye. Home against LSU, they get a win. It's going to be a tough game, but they'll get a win. At Kentucky, they'll get a win. Home against UT Chattanooga, 50-point win. And then comes the last game of the year, the traditional rivalry, the Iron Bowl. And you know what? Alabama's going to do a hiccup. I think at this point in time in the season, they played LSU, who's going to beat them up. They're playing Kentucky, who's beat them up. Tennessee's going to have some plays. UT Chattanooga's a last game. Auburn, because they played this physical style of play, they're going to be a little bit weaker because they do have some depth issues. And I, Auburn's going to catch them, and they're going to lose that game to finish 10-2, and 6-2 and two in conference. Next up, we have Auburn. How they do this year? Well, they help start the season home against UMass. The Auburn. Start almost the season home against UMass. They get a win. Home at Cal, get a win. Home against Samford, not Stanford. Samford, get a win. At Texas A&M, that's a loss. Home against Georgia, big loss. Then they get the bye. At LSU, big loss. Home against Ole, Ole Miss, big win. It's a coin flip game. You've been on the road. I'm going to give it to Ole Miss, but you're at home. Home against Mississippi State. You get a win. Coin flip game as well. Even though Mississippi State's coming to get into Mississippi State. At Vanderbilt, you're going to get the win. At Arkansas, that's a loss. Another coin flip game. Depends on who's at home. Home against New Mexico State, you get the win. And home against Alabama. Having it there, Hugh Freeze has had Nick Saban's number. And with we, I, that's reason one of the other reasons I picked Auburn to win this game. So I'm picking Al, Al, Auburn to beat Alabama to finish 8-4. and four. Four and four in conference. Next up, we have Arkansas. How are they going to do this year? Well, home against Western Carolina, that's a win. Big one. Home against Kent State, that's a win. 
home against BYU. If they had to travel the Pro Bowl, I would have said I would have given the win to BYU. But they're going to be at home, so it's a coin flip game. I gave them the win at LSU. Yeah, you're going to get boat raced. Home against Texas A&M in Arlington. You're actually going to beat A&M. That's a big win for you guys. At Ole Miss, that's a loss. Coin flip game based on who's on the road. At Alabama, <laughs> yeah, you're going to get beat up badly. Home against Mississippi State. Mississippi State's actually going to beat you at home. It's, then you have the bye. At Florida, Florida's going to beat you. Arkansas. Florida. I think at this point in time, Florida's going to figure out who they are. Because with the transition and everything, they're going to figure things out. And Florida's going to beat you at that game because you're on the road. At home, I'm going to give it to you, but you're on the road, so I'm giving it to Florida. Home against Auburn, that's a win. Home against Florida National, that's a win. Home against Missouri, that's a win. To finish 7-5, and 3-5 and five in conference. Next up, LSU. They had a phenomenal season last season. How well can they do this year? Well, they start off the season at home. Actually, at home, it's a neutral site game, the Camping World Stadium against Florida State. Probably the most watched week one game that's going to be on the schedule. And as you watch the ACC preview, you know that I have LSU beating Florida State. Home against Grambling, they get a win. At Mississippi State, they get the win. Home against Arkansas, they get the win. At Ole Miss, Ole Miss cooks at home against the teams. But I think you're going to stum hit a stumbling block. You're going to lose at Ole Miss. Home against at Missouri, but you get the win. Home against Auburn, you get the win. Home against uh, Army, you get the win. Then you have the bye. Then you go at Alabama. Just like Texas. All the teams that beat Alabama last year, and beat Alabama last year, all of them were they were on they were they were at home. And Alabama was on the road. Now all three of those teams are at home. Are on the road and Alabama's at home. And Alabama's going to beat LSU this year. Home against Florida, that's a win. Home against Georgia State, that's a win. Home against Texas A&M, that's a win. To finish 10-2, and 6-2 and two in conference. Next up, Mississippi State. Subscriber school went 9-4 and four last year. This is the first full season with Zach Garnett as head coach. Defensive coordinator who took over after the unfortunate, tragic passing of Mike Leach. Um, Zach's not running a... For anybody who has any problem with Mike Leach, one, he was one of the most entertaining interviews in the history of college football, and two, he practically invented the modern passing game. Zach Garnett has said this is not the system we're going to run. So my question is, can Will Rogers adjust to the new system? That's going to be a key point for the season. Uh, the wide receiver room looks solid. The offensive line, offensive line actually looks great. Um, running backs look good. Um, defensive line... may have a possible depth issue because the players that left, can the new players, the younger ones, step up and fill in those spots? Linebacker room. <laughs> They're all linebackers, basically all of them are all back, and they love to live in the backfield. They are going to be everywhere. So, because Zach Arnett's a defensive coordinator. He's a defensive guy. The linebackers are going to, they're going to be causing mayhem everywhere. And but the secondary has a lot of new pieces, though, because of some losses. So can they adjust with the new pieces and everybody get in the flow of the defense? That would be a key thing for the season. So how's Mississippi State going to do? Home against Southeastern Louisiana, that's a win. Home against Arizona, that's a win. Home against LSU, unfortunately, that's a loss. At South Carolina, that's also a loss. You've been at home, I would have given you the win. But you're at South Carolina. South Carolina plays something different. Tennessee found this out the hard way. Home against Alabama, that's a loss. Home against Western Michigan is a win. At Arkansas is a win. At Auburn, unfortunately, they're going to catch you. And you're going to get a loss there. Home against Kentucky, that's a win. At Texas A&M. You've been at home, I'm to give you the win, but you're on the road, so you get a loss. Home against Southern Miss, that's a win. And home against Ole Miss, your rival. You're going to beat them again. To finish 7-5, and 3-5 and five in conference. Next up, Ole Miss. How they do this year? Well, they start off with home against Mercer. That's a win. At Tulane. This is going to be a lot closer than, they, than people think, but they're going to get the win there. Home against Georgia Tech. That's a win. At Alabama. <laughs> yeah, you're losing that one. Home against LSU. Because you're at home, you get the victory over LSU. Home against Arkansas. Because you're home, you get the victory over Arkansas. Then the bye. At Auburn. Because you're on the road, you get the L. Home against Vandy, you get the win. Home against Texas A&M. Because you're at home, you get the win. At Georgia, that's a loss. Home against ULM, Louisiana Monroe, that's a win. At Mississippi State, as just mentioned, that's a loss. To finish 8-4, and 
four and four in conference. Next up, Texas A&M. Last team from the Western Division, because I did all the Western schools first. How are they going to do? Home against New Mexico, that's a win. At Miami, that's a win. Home against Louisiana Monroe, that's a win. Home against Auburn, that's a win. Home against Arkansas in Arlington. You heard about their seven Arkansas, that's a loss for them. Home against Alabama, big upset win for them. At Tennessee, you win home. I, as much as I've made a pain me, I would have said you would have beaten Tennessee. But you're on the road, that's a loss. Then you get the bye, home against South Carolina, you get the win because you were at home. At Ole Miss, you get the loss because you're on the road, you get the L. Home against Mississippi State, you get the win because you're at home. Home against Abilene Christian, that's a win. And at LSU, LSU's just better than you are, you get the loss to finish 8-4, and 4-4 four, four and four in conference. Now comes the SEC East team, starting off with everybody's favorite punching bag, Florida. How are they going to do this year? Well... I made a prediction that was considered a bold prediction last year. When I said Florida, what Utah was traveling to Florida, and even though Utah was the defending Pac-12 champions, Florida was going to beat them because of the cross-country travel. Everybody thought it was nuts. Florida won. Utah doesn't have Cam Rising. They don't have a quarterback. They don't have a problems. Florida doesn't have Anthony Richardson, and they're going cross-country to a higher altitude. I'm picking Utah to beat Florida. I'm not backing down. Florida catches the L there. Home against McNeese State, they get a win. Home against Tennessee. There's some people who think they're going to win this game. This is the game that Tennessee pr proves that they're on the way to being completely back. They need to step on the throat of Florida, and they will. Tennessee beats Florida. Home against Charlotte, that's a win. At Kentucky, you went at home, you got the win, but you're on the road, you get the L. Home against Vandy, that's a win. At South Carolina, because you're on the road, you get the L. And here comes the bye. Then comes the cocktail party against Georgia and Jacksonville. Yeah, you're getting boat raced. You're losing that one. Home against Arkansas, you get the win because you're at home. At LSU, you get the loss. At Missouri, you get the win. And home against Florida State, your in-state rival, but FSU beats you to finish 5-7, five 3-5 and seven, three and five in conference. Billy Napier can't get to a bowl game. Next up, subscriber school and the two-time defending national champions, the Georgia Bulldogs. 15-0 last season. Gee, that's a shock on the record. Um, for my Georgia fans, and you can answer this question in the comments, how good is Carson Beck? And this question I don't think can be answered this year. It's going to take time. But the way quarterbacks in the way Stetson Bennett developed, can Carson, I'm not, Carson Beck can't be Stetson Bennett, but he could he develop on a similar, similar you know, scale going up? Could he do the same thing? Could he develop that way? Just let me know in the let me know in the comments about that. Um, Ron Rod Thomas and Donnie Dominic Levet uh, transfers to the wide receiver pole. You lost some receivers. Can those two mesh well in the room and do better? I think they can. But early in the season, how good is that going to be? Um, the key defensive players on the team are gone, just like they were in 2021, but Georgia doesn't rebuild, they reload. They have the depth. That's one of the things that was figured out a long time ago. you got to spend the money on the facilities to get the depth, because that's how you stay good. Um, the outs one dig knock that's on the Georgia defense, even the Georgia fans admit, the outside linebackers are a little bit young compared to what they normally are. Can they play like veterans quickly? And how well can they get acclimated to the frenzy that is the Georgia defense, because that's going to be a key. They had some playing time, but starting and being bench is two different things, and everybody knows that. Um, key games for their schedule this season. At South Carolina, home against Ole Miss, and at Tennessee. Their schedule is home at UT Martin, home at Ball State, home at South Carolina, home against UAB, at Auburn, home against Kentucky, at Vandy, Home against Florida, the cocktail party in Jacksonville. Home against Missouri, home against Ole Miss, at Tennessee, at Georgia Tech. As much as I hate to say this, they're going 12-0 again. Um, the Ole Miss game is the one game that I'm worried about. Tennessee, you guys, if Joe Milton plays at lights out, Tennessee can be a threat. Spencer Rattler, if he, he's, if he keeps playing like the way he did last year, South Carolina is going to be a threat. Ole Miss is the one you guys could overlook because it's Lane Kiffin. Who cares? It's before the Tennessee game, and the players might sleepwalk through the game like they did la almost lost to last year. It wasn't Ole Miss, but I forgot. Who was in the school from the MAC? 
that you guys almost slept walk through last year. The team didn't wake up to the late, late third quarter. Can't afford to do that to Ole Miss. That's the trap game. That's the one that I do worry about for Georgia. But they're going 12 0, 8 0 in conference. Kentucky. Here we go here. How they do this season. Well, they're home against Ball State. That's a win. Home against Eastern Kentucky. That's a win. Home against Akron. That's a win. At Vandy. That's a win. At Florida. That's a win. Then they go at Georgia. Big L. Home against Missouri. Get the win. Then comes the bye and oh boy. Home against Tennessee. That's a loss. At Mississippi State. Because you're on the road. That's an L. Home against Alabama. That's a loss. At South Carolina. Because you're on the road. That's an L. And home, excuse me, at Louisville, you will get the win to finish 7-5, and 3-5 and five in conference. Next up, Missouri. It is not going to be a good year in Missouri this year. Home against South Dakota, that's a win. Home against Middle Tennessee State, that's a win. Home against Kansas State. Because you're at home, you get the win. If you've been on the road, I'm going to give you the L. Home against Memphis, actually neutral site game against Memphis in St. Louis. You get the win. At Vandy. This is a trap game. Because the game after it is at home against LSU. You're going to overlook Vandy and you're going to lose to Vanderbilt. Home against LSU, that's a loss. At Kentucky, that's a loss. Home against South Carolina, you are going to actually upset South Carolina at home. Because they're going to overlook you. Just like you overlook Vandy. And you're going to get the win there. Then you had the bye. At Georgia out of the bye, that's a loss. Home against Tennessee, that's a loss. Home against Florida, that's a loss. And then finish the season at Arkansas. Your road game, that's a loss to finish 5-7, and 1-7 seven, and seven in conference. Next up, South Carolina. Spencer Rattler and the boys. How can they do this year? Well, they start off the season with a neutral site game against North Carolina in Charlotte. Probably Panther Stadium, probably. That's a win. Home against Furman, that's a win. At Georgia, yeah, that's a loss. Home against Mississippi State, because you're at home, that's a win. At Tennessee, I'm worried about the South Carolina game because of what you, way you did guys last year. So I worried about it. So I basically had to admit the fact that if this was been, you might have won this game, but it's at home for Tennessee, so you're getting the L there. Coming to the bye, home against Florida, that's a win. At Missouri, I said you got, you fell to Missouri because you're not paying attention, that's a loss. At Texas A&M, not paying attention, that's a loss. Home against Jacksonville State, that's a win. Home against Vandy, that's a win. Home against Kentucky, that's a win. And if you watched the ACC preview video, home against Clemson, you're going to beat Clemson again to finish 8-4, and 4-4 four, four and four in conference. Next up, my Tennessee Vols. Finished 11 and 2 as last year. Can, can Joe Milton play anywhere near what Hendon Hooker was? Hendon Hooker was an incredibly accurate quarterback. Mobile, accurate quarterback. Joe Milton is a mobile, cannon arm, INT somewhat prone quarterback. Yeesh. Is the Joe Milton we saw in the South in the Clemson game we see we see all season? Yeesh. I don't know. They said, oh, your offense is taking a step back because your two wide receivers are gone. Um, our two top wide receivers were gone until after the 2021 season. They got replaced. They both went to the NFL. Now the top two this year, last year left, went to the NFL. And we still got depth cart there, so I'm not worried about the wide receiver room. Josh Heupel puts wide, when he was at, from UCF and Tennessee, he puts wide receivers in the league. They get their numbers. So he puts them in the league, so they're going to make their money. They're going to make money in the NFL. But I'm not worried about the wide receivers. Running back room, basically, every Jalen Wright and everybody, everybody's intact. So that makes a good thing there. The defensive line will be improved because most of the pieces are back. The one little stat that I, I was kind of shocked to actually look this up, Tennessee led the SEC in tackles for a loss, not Georgia. That kind of surprised me. Uh, the back, linebacker room, Jeremy Banks left. I um, can't remember his name. Jawan Mitchell left for Arizona State. They're going to be having some losses here. Um, so Keenan Pali, who played from BYU, can he fill in that alpha role that Jeremy Banks filled? And can the other linebackers step up? That's going to be a question. Secondary's got a lot of new faces. There's a lot of new faces in the secondary. Can the new faces step up and take those spots? Well, we'll find out. How's the schedule going? Well, week one, neutral site game in Nashville, Titan Stadium against Virginia. Their first game since the tragedy. They're going to get the win there, but that's going to be... I, I think Virginia is going to be emotionally out of it. If that game would have been in Virginia, I honestly think... 
Tennessee be in trouble losing because they would have been playing out of their minds for that game. But there's in Nashville, some get the win. They, Tennessee gets the win. Home against Austin P. That's a win. At Florida, like I said, knuckleheads thinking Florida's, Florida's not winning. Tennessee beats Florida. Home against UTSA, that's a win. Home against South Carolina, because they're at home, I'm giving Tennessee the win. Then there's the bye. Home against Texas A&M, because they're at home, they get the win. At Alabama, just like I told Texas about the fans, about every road team getting home, getting hometown by the officials, Tennessee will be no different. They're catching the L against Alabama. At Kentucky, they're going to get the win. Home against UConn, they get the win. At Missouri, they get the win. Home against Georgia, going to be a dogfight, but they're going to lose that game too, unfortunately. And then beat Vandy to end the season at 10-2, and 6-2 and two in conference. Next, last one for the SEC, Vanderbilt. Um, they won five games last year. I call the easiest bet right now in all of college sports to bet on a sports book is the over on the win total for Vanderbilt. They're picked at three and a half. What do I think? Well, let's see. They have a week zero game at home against Hawaii. Hawaii traveling all the way to Nashville. Yeah, the easy win for Vandy. Home against Alabama and A&M. That's a win. At Wake Forest. Fortunately for you, that's a loss. At UNLV, even though it's cross-country, Vandy's got the athletes. I don't think UNLV's going to be ready for them at this point. That's a win for Vanderbilt. Home against Kentucky, that's a loss. Home against Missouri. Missouri is going to underestimate Vandy, as I said before, and Vandy gets the win. And then the heart of the schedule kicks in, and they lose every one of them the rest of the way. Listen to this. At Florida, that's somewhat of an even game, I could, because... But I've but got to give Florida, lost to Florida because they're on the road. And then home against Georgia, L, bye. At Ole Miss, L. Home against Auburn, L. At South Carolina, L. Then another bye because they played the Week Zero game. They get two byes. And finish the season at Tennessee, L. To finish 4-8, and 1-7 and seven in conference. So how does the schedule standing stack up? Well, SEC West, bottom to top. Arkansas, seven and five, three and five in conference. Mississippi State, seven and five, three and five in conference. Why? Mississippi State beat Arkansas. This is all the winnings here is based on who beat who goes above for somebody else. Mississippi State beat Arkansas, so Mississippi State is higher. That's all you need to know about the, how I do the things here. Compare the common game between the two. Who won? They get ranked higher. Texas A&M, 8-4, 4-4 four, four four in conference. Ole Miss, 8-4, 4-4 four, four four in, four in conference. Auburn, 8-4, 4-4 four, four four in, four in conference. Couldn't believe that when I wrote it up. LSU, 10-2, 6-2 and two, six and two in conference. And winning the SEC West, Alabama, 10-2, 6-2 and two, six and two in conference because they beat LSU. SEC East in the bottom up. Missouri, 5-7, and 1-7 and in conference. Vanderbilt, 4-8, and 1-7 and in, co in conference. Vandy beats Missouri. Florida, 5-7, 3-5 and seven, three and five in conference. Kentucky, 7-5, and 3-5 and five in conference. South Carolina, 8-4, 4-4 and four, four and four in conference. Tennessee, 10-2, and 6-2 and two in conference. Georgia, 12-0, and 8-0 no in conference to win the SEC East. And in a slugfest, Georgia will beat Alabama to once again win the SEC, as much as I don't like saying it. But credit where credit is due. Georgia's got an incredible program right now. And next year, they have potential... To do something good as well, but we'll see. That's going to be a different era. But let me know what you think about everything down in the comments. So thanks everybody for watching the video. If you haven't done it already, please smash the like button, hit the thumbs up. It helps the algorithm, helps the video be seen by more people. Comment on the video. SEC predictions, which ones do you think I got wrong? Mississippi State, Georgia fans are on the subscriber list. Tell me what do you think you agree with my predictions or not and the information. If there's anything I missed about key information, let me know in the comments. If you haven't done it already, please subscribe to the channel. All the way to 500 subscribers on the way, slowly on that crawl up to 1,000. We to make some things happen. 24 minute video. Not that good a sell signal here. So I'm telling you right now, this probably won't upload till Friday morning. And Friday, I'm going to be a video uploading full with shorter videos because I've got some top 25 rankings, subscriber rankings, my college football playoff video, and the preview for all the week zero games. I got four to crank out tomorrow. But the predictions are done. So thanks, everybody, for watching the video. Whoever's having a great Thursday, be safe out there. And please, be good to each other.